Macca's Guides. <laughs> Hey guys, Maca here. Welcome to my full collectibles guide for Resident Evil 2. In this video, I'll be showing you all 58 file locations, all 15 Mr. Raccoons, all 8 safes and locks, as well as the inventory upgrades. You'll get all your achievements and trophies for anything collectible related by following this video, but it will require you to do multiple playthroughs. Starting off, the first file can be found during Leon's playthrough automatically in your inventory. You'll want to keep in mind that some collectibles are unique to certain characters or certain playthroughs. The second file can be found in the Watchman's room automatically attained after this short cutscene where you interact with the metal door. The third file can be found inside of the operations room. As you enter, there will be a small desk off to your right hand side. When going up to it, you should be able to find the document, read it, add it to your inventory. Now in this room, there is one more thing you might want to grab and that is the map. It is of the entire first floor of the police station and can be found by interacting with the large map taped to the chalkboard inside of the room. The next thing you can do after leaving the operations room is go to the west office. As you enter on the desk in front of you, there should be a file named Uses of Gunpowder. This is a Leon exclusive as him and Claire have different weapons, therefore they have different instructions on how they can use gunpowder. In the same room, you can also find the fifth file, which is the operation report. Follow the desk along the right hand side and you'll notice a file uh, on an open portfolio next to a chair, so you'll want to interact with that as well. Then we can also find file number six by continuing along the desk and on this kind of large cabinet, we can find the rookie's first assignment file. So we're six files in now on the same desk. There are two safes or little lock combinations. The combination on the left has the solution of Ned and the combination on the right has the solution of MRG. Open both of those up to have two out of the eight safes or locks opened for the game. And inside you can also find an upgrade for your gun. You want to make sure to actually use the combine feature in your inventory to make sure that you upgrade your gun. Next, from where we're standing, we can also find raccoon number one of 15. Look up into the right on the shelf and you should be able to see it wiggling there. He does a little twerk dance and you also should be able to kind of hear him if you're close enough. Last but not least, this office has a small side room. So if we're going to go there and find a full on safe, this is going to be our third out of eight safes or locks in the game. We need all eight in order to unlock an achievement or trophy. The combination is nine, 15, seven, and you do need to start by going left. And once you open up the safe using this combination, you will also unlock the thing inside, which is a hip pouch. The hip pouch increases the size of your inventory. There are a total of six hit pouches in the game, and we have to make sure to grab all six in one playthrough to have the maximum inventory space for another achievement or trophy to unlock. Across the hall from the West office is the safety deposit room. There's a whole bunch of things we can grab here, but we're going to have to come back later with some other things in order to make the most use of this room. But if you enter and hook around to your left, you will find the storage locker technical memo on the desk. We then work our way towards the staircase, but before going upstairs, we can go to a side room, which is called the dark room. In here you can save, but you can also find a file directly in front of you. For the medical benefits of herbs, this is a crafting tutorial for you in order to explain how the healing system works. If you work your way up the stairs from the dark room, you'll end up on the second floor and you can find the men's washroom. There's a whole bunch of things we can grab in here, but if we go forward and through the door, the first thing we'll want to do is go for the safe or combination lock, which is found directly in front of us. And the solution for this lock is cap C A P.
From the locker in the shower room, we can take a right-hand turn from where we entered the door, and we can find file number 9, portable safe instructions, posted to the wall. Next to the portable safe instructions is an actual portable safe, so we're going to interact with it, put it into our inventory, then we're going to examine it and have to figure out the combination. The combination is not actually going to be the same every single time you play, so you can try to figure it out. You can test the one that I'm using if you want, and it might work for you, but they don't always work. Anyways, once it opens up, you will unlock an achievement or trophy for figuring out a portable safe, and you will also unlock a spare key, which we'll need for a collectible later on in the game. Now, from the shower room, the path was blocked, so we have to go upstairs to the third floor of the police station, kind of directly above where we just were. As we walk forward, we should notice a locker directly in front of us, and we can open it up for safe or lock number 5 of 8. The combination for this one is DCM. Now, just after the previous collectible, you'll find the blue spade key and then walk into the next hallway. Instead of entering the door on your left, head to the very end of the hall where there's a dead end in order to find file number 10. We've now entered the west storage room and there are two things we should grab before we leave to the library. The first thing I'm going to show you is the inventory upgrade number 2 of 6, another hip pouch. It should be found on the kind of far end near the destroyable wall on the desk. So make sure you pick that up and uh, you know, you'll also have more inventory space to work with now as you play through the game. And then next to that we can also find a file, file number 11, also inside of this same room, is some guy's scribblings which will describe to you how to get through the destroyable wall. Now, from the west storage room, you can connect to the library, head down the ladder, and once on the second floor, you can head to the lounge. And in the lounge, you can find a map showing the upper floors of the police station, which is pretty useful to have for all the collectibles coming up. Then you'll want to go to the main hall and go across the top floor to the waiting room. Inside of the waiting room, we can find file number 12 sitting on the desk. This is called Guide Pamphlet. Additionally, in this room, we can find safe or lock number 6 of 8 behind the desk. The combination for this is 6 to 11, starting by going left. And once you open it, you should unlock an upgrade to your gun. So make sure you combine it with your gun. From the waiting room, work your way into the hallway and then go into the art room. In the art room, we can find file number 13 of 58, art article, The Red Stone. Additionally, when you're in this room, feel free to pick up the weapons locker key on the desk next to this collectible. You'll then eventually find the cutting tool, which will lead you into a new office in the east side of the building. You'll be able to grab a round handle and then work your way through the shower rooms to end up at the star's office. Once inside of the star's office on the second floor, you'll be able to go inside of the side office. You'll grab a battery, which is kind of your main objective. But inside of this room, you can also find file number 14 of 58, the internal memo. Additionally, you can find Mr. Raccoon number 2 of 15 inside of the star's office. It's going to be kind of on the opposite side of where you enter to the right behind a box. Again, you should be able to hear it once you approach and then make sure you take out your pistol and shoot it. Now eventually you'll end up in the underground facility, you'll go through the machinery room and then end up in an operation room with a ladder that lets you climb up. But before climbing up, make sure you look inside of the locker to grab inventory upgrade number 3 of 6.
Now we are in the parking garage underground in the police station. What we'll do first is grab the map for the basement. And to do that, what you want to do is kind of face the ladder that we took downwards, which we can't climb back up now. And there should be a door with a green label on it. Go through that door and then into the jail cell and you'll be able to get a map here. You'll then work your way through the parking garage and end up at the end of the jail cells. On the desk, you can find a tool that is required for further progress. But additionally, next to that tool, you can find file number 15, and that is called the jail power panel. And this is a Leon only collectible since uh, Claire actually never comes here in her playthrough. You'll then work your way to the morgue. On the far end of the morgue, you'll be able to find the diamond key inside one of the kind of sliding things. But additionally, you can also find a file. This is going to be number 16, autopsy record number 53477. We can then make our way to the firing range. Inside of the firing range, as you enter on the desk to your right, find file number 17, equipment disposal notice. I have already turned on the power, but you can come here before doing that. So keep that in mind. Now, there are more collectibles inside of the firing range. We can also find a message from Mr. Raccoon on the desk directly in front of us where the reception area would kind of be. So make sure you pick that up as well. Now, not only that, you can also find a raccoon doll by going up to the firing range, lining up and looking diagonally across to the left. And you should be able to notice this one in the distance. Make sure you take it out before leaving. Next up, we can go to the break room, which is a Leon only area inside of the break room. You'll find a save point, but you'll also find Mr. Raccoon number four. Go to the back room and look behind the briefcase on the floor to spot him. You'll eventually end up with a crank tool. You can take that crank tool to the wall near the art room in order to open up a new area, which we'll need to use in order to find our other electrical component and make our way to the clock tower. So open up the crank door. And as soon as you enter this new area, you should be able to find Mr. Aku number five, basically on the table directly in front of you. Then eventually you'll end up on the balcony, you'll get the clover key, and then with the clover key you can come back to this area and open up this clover door in order to reveal a new area. Inside of this area there's a few things we'll want to grab including the kind of jewelry encrusted box which we'll need for something later. But the main collectible here for now is file number 19 which is the confiscation report found on the little filing cabinet. Now the next collectible does involve a little bit of a puzzle. You need to go to the library in order to grab the red book. Take the red book to the art room and combine the red book with the statue arm. Put the statue arm inside of the statue which will reveal a specter. Take the specter and examine it in order to get the red jewel. Then place the red jewel in the diamond encrusted box in order to reveal the star's badge. Examine the badge to turn it into a USB key. And then you can finally bring it over to the star's office, put it in the computer, interact with the machine to unlock a new gun. But on top of this gun, you can also find file number 20, the letter to the star's members. The second portable safe can be found inside of the linen room. We will require a key in order to gain access to this room. It's the diamond key from the morgue in this playthrough. Once inside, look to the left hand side and find the portable safe and then you'll need to solve it. Your solution may be the same as mine, but it also may be different. Upon opening this portable safe, you will find another spare key and make sure you now have both of the spare keys inside of your inventory at the same time for the next collectible. With both of the spare keys unlocked through the portable safes, you can now go back down to the safety deposit room with the lockers and place both of the spare keys inside of the machine. 
Now you can open up a whole bunch of things you weren't able to open up before, but most importantly, you want to enter 203 and then press enter in order to unlock the locker with the hip pouch, which is one of our six inventory upgrades. We'll then find the tool and take the tool to the library in order to create a bridge using the bookcases. We'll then be able to climb the ladder and go across these bookshelves into the top floor where the clock tower is. And then inside of the room with the clock tower, you can find file number 21. This one is called repair plan and can be found on the desk directly in front of you as you enter. From the clock tower room, we can also find Mr. Raccoon number six, probably one of the sneakiest ones in the entire game. Run through the clock tower all the way to the other end and you'll find a door. This door basically leads to an empty hallway. At the very end of the hallway, if you turn to the left and look on the window ledge, you'll be able to find the Mr. Raccoon. There's really nothing else to grab here other than a little bit of gunpowder though. After getting both of the electrical components, you'll be able to return to the jail and put them inside of the unit in order to solve the puzzle and gain access into the jail cell. Inside of the jail cell, you'll be able to find two Leon exclusive files. One of them is number 22, Ben's memo, which is found on the ground. And the other one is the interview transcript number 23, which is found on Ben when interacting with him and that will unlock automatically. You'll also grab the parking key card from him when you do that. Mr. Raccoon number seven can be found once you enter the sewers directly after defeating the giant crocodile. You'll have to kind of turn around and then once you're turned around, look to your left. It's kind of behind some trash in a far corner. You'll be able to shoot at it and take it out. Leon, up here. What the hell was... During Leon's playthrough, there is also an ADA specific section where you're using the EMF visualizer to kind of hack your way through the puzzles. You'll eventually come up a small ladder and hack through a fan, and then you will drop down, look to the right, and you should be able to notice a file on the desk before leaving the room. While still playing as Ada, you'll come to the incinerator. What you'll want to do is go up the stairs and you'll head towards the kind of controls for the incinerator. Sitting next to them, you can find a file, which is obviously going to be Leon specific since this only happens during Leon's playthrough. So make sure you pick it up before interacting with the controls. From the controls of the incinerator, we can find raccoon number eight. We can do this as Ada, or we can do this as Leon, as we do come through this area later on in the game. I'm going to do it as early as possible, which is right now. Go to the incinerator, and before going inside, look to the right of it, near the door, standing on the ledge in a pile of rubble. You'll find uh, the, the small little doll thing, and then you can... You will then regain control of Leon. You'll enter a control room, which is a shared area between all the playthroughs. Here we can find a copy of emails to Umbrella HQ on the desk to the right as we entered. Additionally, inside of the controls room, we can find a safe or lock combination. This is gonna be number seven out of eight. And the combination for this is S, Z, F.
You'll eventually work your way through a bit of the sewers and drop down into the monitor room. When in the monitor room, the first thing you probably want to grab is a map of the sewers, which can be found taped to the wall next to the window. So make sure you grab that first. Additionally, inside of the monitor room, we can also find two files. Number 27 is called Sewers Company Pamphlet. It's found on the desk next to the VCR player, and you'll just want to interact with that to make sure you grab it. Additionally, we can also find instructions for unlocking the U area door. If you work your way to the kind of uh, control panels with all the chess pieces on the desk, you can grab another file. We're now just in the next room from the monitor room in the treatment pool area after crossing the small bridge. Here you'll find something that's mandatory in order to proceed through the game and that is the T-bar tool handle which we'll need to go through a couple of doors we wouldn't be able to proceed through otherwise. But if we go down the stairs from there we can also find a file sitting on the desk. This one's number 29 out of 58. We're halfway there. Also in the treatment pool room on the opposite side of the cable car, we can find our final safe or lock. This is number eight of eight. The combination here is two, 12, and then eight. And once you open this up, if you've grabbed the seven before it, you should be able to pop your achievement or trophy and then continue along the game. You'll eventually then work your way through the sewers and then you'll end up at a small ladder. Near this ladder is a sewers key. You can try to grab that or we can backtrack for it later. You'll climb down the ladder, go across the bottom waterway and find this door next to this red light. Go through that door and then walk in up the stairs and to the left, you'll be able to find a Mr. Raccoon sitting behind some boxes. Then we'll want to find our way to the lower waterway and you'll notice that there is a workroom lift area and we'll need to access this room using the T-bar. We actually walked past this room earlier but did not have access to it yet. Then you'll want to climb up or rather take the small elevator up and you'll find an inventory upgrade. It's a hip pouch. This is number five out of six. You'll find it sitting on the desk just to the left of you. Additionally, in this room, there's a roll of film that leads to an achievement or trophy called the treasure hunter. I have a separate video up for that if you're interested. Now for the next file, number 30, we will need the sewers key. It can be grabbed near the ladder that leads to the bottom waterway if you didn't grab it already. And what you can do is now open the treatment facility door and inside of this door, you can find the jazz festival flyer. Additionally, if you want, you can move the cupboard over on the far wall to reveal a secret elevator. This secret elevator takes you back to the police. We've now made our way over to Umbrella HQ. In the lobby, you can find file number 31. Interact with the computer in the reception area to get the nap room log. Okay, I wonder where the G virus is. Also in the reception area, there's a small back room. There is a little poster board with a bunch of files on it. There's number 32, it's called ID wristbands and it explains how to get access to new areas. Additionally, we'll also grab the map so that we have a layout of the entire floor plan. And what we can do is go across the hall into the security room. There will be some Claire specific collectibles here on another playthrough, but for now we'll grab the map off the desk in order to reveal all of the little locations. The next place for you to go is the cafeteria. Here you can find Mr. Raccoon number 10. Work your way towards the ladder, but just before going up the ladder, look to the right hand side and you should be able to spot this one. We now have the level two access band and we go back to reception to open up a previously locked door, which will reveal kind of the main shaft of the 
uh, facility before going across the bridge and extending it look on the soldier to the right hand side to find file number 33 special forces recording we've now made our way through the greenhouse control room and into the drug testing lab find the herbicide synthesis on the desk in front of you as you enter We can also find a map for the east area of the lab. What we'll want to do is exit the drug lab and then take a left-hand turn in order to find a small ladder that leads downstairs. After taking the ladder and getting off of it at the bottom, you'll want to turn left and head down the dark hall. At the end of the hall, there is a small desk with the map on it as well as some gunpowder you can pick up. We've then made our way through the downstairs and found a staircase that leads upstairs. It is technically connected to the lobby, but the door doesn't work. So once we get in here, which is a mandatory part of the game in order to get an electronic component, you can also find file number 35 on the chair called Somebody's Note. After grabbing the signal modulator, you'll work your way back downstairs and interact with the box that has the passcode MURF. This is basically going to turn electricity on to the majority of this downstairs lab. We'll now be able to access a new door we weren't able to access before, which is the cryo lab. And as you enter, you should be able to find a computer on the desk with Wayne Lee's inbox. You'll need to come to this room in order to synthesize the herbicide anyways. After using the cryo machine to synthesize the herbicide, you'll put it inside of the greenhouse control room to kill all the pests. You'll then be able to grab a level 3 access card and go to the presentation room where you'll be able to find a file on the computer. Last but not least, we'll need to backtrack to the nap room now that we have the level 3 access card as well as the signal modulator. Interact with the power box on the far wall and make sure that your signal modulator is correct with the proper settings. This will allow you to power the room. It will unveil a zombie, but additionally, it'll also unveil a couple of things we can grab. The first thing we'll want to grab, though, is directly next to us, inventory upgrade number 6 of 6. An achievement or trophy should unlock for you if you have full capacity right now inside of your inventory. Uh, zombie will also spawn, so we will quickly take him out before moving on to the next collectible inside of this room, which is another Mr. Raccoon. This is number 11, so make sure you take him out sitting in that first pod as well. Additionally, inside of the nap room, we can find file number 38, Wayne Lee's note, inside of the second pod. We now use the signal modulator for the last time inside of a small office. As you power it, you should notice an item box as well as a save point and a VCR. But you'll also notice a computer on the desk, which has file number 39, William Birkin's inbox. Last but not least, in one of the final rooms of the game, before grabbing the sample from the container in front of me, make sure you interact with the computer on the left to find the research diary, and then you can finish off this playthrough and start on another one. Now, in order to do a Claire A playthrough, you'll go to the main menu and then select New Game and select Claire as the character. She'll have a file automatically unlocked in her inventory once she starts. Most of the collectibles that are unique to her are found only in the unique parts of her campaign. You'll then work your way to the West office and find a file called Uses of Gunpowder. This is a Claire-only collectible as she has different instructions from the one Leon had when he was here. You'll then end up in the parking garage and you'll be able to go to the elevator control room area. You'll be able to find a collectible on the table called Raccoon Monthly June Issue and you can also pick up the map while here. We can then work our way through the elevator, go upstairs to the Chief's office, as we enter the chief's office, there is a collectible directly in front of you on the desk. This is number 44 and called Copy of Emails to Chief Irons. Staying inside of the chief's office, we can find another file. This one's going to be on the desk in the middle of the room called the Taxidermy Log. Seating from the chief's office through the hallway will end up in the room with the electronic panel that we'll need to solve. At the end of this room, we can find file number 46, which is the repair shop letter. Next to this letter, you can also find a photo frame that is hiding the 
heart key, which we'll need to proceed. We'll then work our way up the stairs towards the east storage room. And inside of the east storage room, you can find the large gear, which we'll need to gain access to the clock tower. But there's also a heart key room here, which only Claire can access because she's the only one with that key. And once you go inside, if you look up and to the left, you should be able to find Mr. Raccoon number 12. After solving the electrical panel, you'll get to play as Sherry. Inside of the hallway, after exiting the bedroom, you should find file number 47, Sally's Diary. Still inside of the orphanage, you'll work your way downstairs and found on the desk near the middle of the room, you can find Tom's Diary. Continuing in the orphanage, you'll end up in the director's room. Directly in front of you, next to the save point, we can find a diary, but we don't know who it belongs to. This is going to be file number 49. We are now back to playing as Claire. We've worked our way through the basketball court, and then we'll need to work our way through a bus in order to get to the orphanage. As you enter the bus, instead of going through it, make sure you look to the front of it, and you'll see it out the window, or like in the window. Make sure you take it out. Watch out for the zombie behind you, by the way. We've then made our way inside of the orphanage. Instead of going to the left, which would be the kind of natural path for progression, we want to go up the stairs and then through the door. As you enter the door, directly in front of you on a small ledge, you should find Mr. Raccoon number 14 of 15. We only have one more left. Additionally, while up here, we'll want to find file number 50, the letter from the director. To grab this, work your way around towards the washroom. Enter the washroom and in the kind of far corner from where we entered on a small little stool, we should be able to find the file. There's also some stuff we can loot while in here though. We should then end up in this room labeled as the office with find Sherry as our main objective. There is an item box and a safe point in here, but additionally there should be a file near the whiteboard. Make sure you grab it before going down the ladder to the next area. We'll then end up at Umbrella HQ. We'll put Sherry in the bed in the security room and next to her there is a laptop with file number 52. It says important nest wide alert. Now next up, we are ready for our B playthroughs. To access them, go to the main menu and select New Game Second Run. And then we'll be able to select Leon and we'll do Leon B's scenario. We can start off by finding the very last raccoon we'll need in the game, number 15. As soon as we start this campaign, go down the steps, up the steps, and then look in the bushes to your left in order to shoot it. This one took about 30 to 40 seconds to unlock for me, so be a little bit patient. Now this next file is just a variant of a file from the playthroughs before, but it is actually unique. Inside of the watchman's room, we'll be able to find a scrap of paper instead of the officer's notebook. We can then work our way to the main hall, and we can find the notebook with a missing page in the place of where Marvin would be sitting. If we then work our way to the star's office, we can find file number 55. This is Claire's memo. It's a note that Claire left for Leon in order to tell him about what she's been up to. Later on in the game, in the treatment pool room, we can find Claire's note, another Leon-specific collectible. This one's available near where you find the T-bar handle. And at this point, we can basically run through and complete the campaign with Leon. And we only have two more files left, and they are accessible only through Claire B playthroughs. Now in a Claire B playthrough access by going to New Game Second Run and then selecting Claire, we can find one of her two unique collectibles inside of the star's office, Find Leon's Memo. The last file can be found in the treatment pool room after extending the bridge near the T-bar handle. This one's Leon's note, and that should be 58 of 58. You should have all achievements or trophies related to anything collectible in the game. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please drop a like if the video was helpful. Share the video with some friends. That would be super appreciated. Special thanks to the amazing people on Patreon for supporting the show. And hopefully I see you guys next time. Peace.